he's special, very special. And Tennessee's own head coach stated after the practice a couple of days ago, quote unquote, as talented as anybody I've ever been around in my coaching career. So a few days ago, we talked about the Alabama quarterback going on between Ty Simpson and Jalen Milrow. Most people want to believe, and they do believe, that Ty Simpson, the if you don't know who that is, that's the guy who was the third stringer last year behind Jalen Milrow. He is going to win the starting job for Alabama. But a lot of people within the team, they think Jalen Milrow, he's got the best shot. Like I said, we talked all about that two or three days ago. Jalen Milrow, he had one of the best throws you're ever going to see. Long story short, the Alabama quarterbacks, they're battling it out. Meanwhile, though, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, while Nick Saban and the Alabama football team's trying to figure out who's going to be the guy, not too far up the road, up in Knoxville, Tennessee, they're doing the same thing. I would say it's a bit of a different field though up in Neyland Stadium because I'd say most Tennessee fans, they're very confident that Jalen Mill, no, 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 my bad, my bad, that Joe Milton is gonna be the starting quarterback. And it's rightfully so. I mean, heck, last time Joe Milton played in a game where most people thought Tennessee was gonna lose to Clemson, he went 19 for 28, had 250 yards with three touchdowns and zero INTs. And to go on top of all of that, I'm sure you've heard about it. I'm not gonna rant and rave on it too much because it's all everybody talks about. Joe Milton has an absolute rocket launcher cannon whatever you want to call it for an arm when it comes to arm talent there's no question about it for joe milton this dude can launch that thing but the one concern that most people have is okay yeah he can throw it 75 yards but can he throw the five yard pass can he throw the 10 yard slant can he throw the 15 to 20 yard post route that's the question that i'd say most people have about joe milton can he be accurate in the shadows though lurking behind the scenes we got a five-star quarterback recruit that got paid $12 million to go to Tennessee. In the shadows, though, we've got a guy who I stated over eight to nine months ago is better than Arch Manning. He's the number one quarterback recruit in the class of 2023. And last but not least, in the shadows, though, we have a guy who is exceptionally talented, and I think he can win games right away for Tennessee. If you haven't heard about this guy, I'm so high on him. I think he's the best quarterback recruit in this up-and-coming class. His name is Nico Imaleva. In this most recent class, everybody had Arch Manning as the number one quarterback. Back. Everybody had Malachi Nelson, the kid who's going to USC, but I've had Nico Imaleva since day one. This dude can play. He's super athletic, former volleyball player. He's got great footwork, great arm, great everything. He's a 10 out of 10. He's special, very special. And Tennessee's own head coach stated after the practice a couple of days ago, quote unquote, as talented as anybody I've ever been around in my coaching career. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say that's some pretty high praise. The quarterbacks up in Knoxville, Tennessee, they're battling it out. We're going to talk all about that in today's video. And also, we got one other minor topic to go over, and that is no other than Jalen Carter. He can't stay out of the news. It's going to be a jam-packed video. I'm excited to get into this one. This has got me ready for the college football season. Get you a snack, get your popcorn. All right, Matt Bubba, should have grabbed up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Hmm, where do we want to start with this? Okay, I'll say first things first. Let's get this out of the way. We'll talk about Jalen Carter. Only going to talk about this for one to two minutes. If you haven't been living under a rock and you've been keeping up with the NFL draft and stuff going on, you would know that Jalen Carter, at one point in time, he was supposed to be a top three pick, a lock to be a top three pick. But in the past couple of weeks, his stock has plummeted like a rock. It's been stated publicly that multiple teams have taken him off their boards completely, including the Oakland Raiders, but we all know why. I mean, the Oakland Raiders, they can't take any more risk. But now, fast forward time to today, the rumors and reports have came out that Jalen Carter is reportedly declining any visit requests from teams picking outside the top 10. Why is he declining these visits? Because his agent is so confident that he will be off the board by pick number 10. So basically, he's saying, hey, if you got pick number 11, why would I waste my time and visit with you? I'm not even going to be on the board. I find that rather interesting. I'm not going to say it's dumb or whatnot because we don't know what these teams are telling him and his agent. Adam Schefter is also a reporter on this, and according to Schefter, here's what Jalen Carter's agent had to say. Quote, unquote, I'm confident Jalen will go in the top 10. He's a good person, a family man, loves football, and is a generational talent. Check out this comment from Jared McCoy, who had to weigh in on things. Whether he's expected to be top 10 or not, his recent circumstances and his workouts, this not smart. I think he meant to say this is not smart, but you get what he's trying to say, continuing along. Also, you never know who may want to trade up. Don't assume with the draft. We've seen some crazy things happen, and I agree. Do you know how many stories I've heard where these teams have told these guys, oh, if you're on the board with that number six pick, we're taking you, and they don't take them? I mean, it happens every single year. And also, like Jerry McCoy stated, with the way things have been going for Jalen Carter, I wouldn't say he's a lock to be a top 10 pick. I would not say that. That's all there really is to this at this current moment in time. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. If I was in this position, coming off of a terrible workout and overcoming the obstacles I had to deal with with the police, 
I think I would be doing all the interviews I could do. Let me put it this way and we'll get a move on. I don't think Jalen Carter has earned the right to go, oh, you're outside the top 10? Psh, we're not even interviewing. No, I'm not even going to do that. We'll see how this plays out. But now finally, moving on to the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. We got to talk about what's going on with Nico Iamaleva, Tennessee, Josh Heupel, and Joe Milton. I've been following up with this pretty closely, and from everything I've seen from all the Tennessee reports and articles, Nico Imaleva and Joe Milton, they're both doing really well in practice. I haven't seen any reports of one guy doing way better than the other. I've just seen a lot of people praising both of them, and that's awesome. For example, I'll show you this. One guy said after seeing one of the practices, Joe Milton will be a top 64 pick in next year's draft, and under that also stated in the same tweet, Nico had some unbelievable throws and his potential is limitless. Very impressed. So yeah, it's none of this, oh, well, Joe Milton's doing bad and Nico's doing good, or Nico's doing really bad and Joe Milton's doing good. No, they're both getting praise. And like I've said, it's rightfully so. They've been doing really good. If I'm a Tennessee fan, I'm jumping for joy. This is honestly the best case and scenario ever. It's the same thing with the Alabama quarterback competition in any quarterback competition. Iron sharpens iron. I'd also argue and say that having a quarterback competition is one of the best things for both quarterbacks because what happens is it doesn't allow any of these guys to take a day off and they're always trying to outperform the other guy friendly competition will always bring out the best in people for example last year bryce young heading into the season that we just had well he's not going to be battling out the quarterback spot with somebody else he just won the heisman trophy so they're forward i'm not saying this happened but this could happen once or twice he could show up to practice and lollygag around and say, hey, it doesn't matter if I even show up and do good at practice, I'm still going to be the starter. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes that mindset can hold you back, whereas if you're one of these Tennessee quarterbacks, you can't afford to have a bad practice because you'll lose the starting job, you'll lose the race, you'll get behind in it. So I'm a person who appreciates a good quarterback competition. I say we talk about Joe Milton first, and I don't think words do it justice. Matt, why don't you show him this clip? Wrote a clip, Matt. Yeah, as you saw and as you see right here, Joe Milton, he dropped a dime. Now I know what everybody's going to say, and I said the same thing about Jalen Milrow. Okay, it's one pass. Let's not overreact. But at the same time, I like to appreciate greatness, and let's acknowledge that it was a heck of a pass. Here's what Josh Hypo had to say about Joe Milton in the recent practices and scrimmages. I thought Joe did a really good job taking care of the football. I thought he slid in the pocket a couple of times and continued to get out of it. I thought he had really good command of what's going on. We got to some situation football at the end for five minutes situation. There's some things we can learn as far as clock management. Nico had a great first drive to put it in the end zone. I thought he responded to everything well. He'll learn some things about command and control on the field, but it was a really good day for those guys. And now here's what Josh Heupel had to say about Nico and Maleva. Man, extremely talented. As talented as anybody I've ever been around in my coaching career. I love his competitive nature. It's extremely important to him. He's handled himself very professionally from the time he's gotten here. And I say that meaning that he's typically one of the first guys in the building. He's definitely the last one to leave. He's spending as much time as anybody in our program trying to learn and master his craft. His ability to understand his body position, coach it, teach it, and be able to take those coaching points and implement it into his game from rep to rep and day to day Really, really impressed with what he's done up until this point. Feel like he's going to continue to grow and go help us win football games. But ladies and gentlemen, here's where things really, and I mean really start to get interesting because one of the veterans on this Tennessee team has said Nico Imaleva is surprising him. He stated, quote unquote, quarterback wise, love Joe, and I think he's had a great spring so far. But here's what he had to say about Nico. Nico's really surprised me. Obviously a big, highly rated recruit, and he's come in and he's kind of fit exactly what everybody's saying about him. I'm excited to see what the future at Tennessee has for Nico. Oh man, what do y'all think about that? At this moment in time, I would say, and I think we can all agree on this, Joe Milton has a slight edge because he's been there longer, he knows the system, and he's done well when he's played. But here's where things can get dicey. The expectations at Tennessee now are to win, and it is to win, a national championship. I believe last year, Tennessee fans, they were just A-OK -okay with beating Alabama. Sure, it was disappointing at the end, but you beat Bama. You got over the hump. Now for Tennessee fans, and I've talked to some, and they've said this, and I think most of y'all watching this video, you would agree with this, it's no longer, okay, let's just beat Alabama. Let's win a championship. So with that being said, what if Joe Milton has one bad game or two bad games? Are Tennessee fans going to be calling for his job? I'd tell you how I feel about it. If I was a Tennessee fan and our starter isn't playing so good and we got a backup quarterback who's a five-star recruit, the number one quarterback in the country coming out of high school, and we're paying him $12 million, 
I'd want to see him play. Now, it'd be different if Joe Milton had some two or three star backing him up, but he's got a dude, and I mean a straight up dude, sitting behind him. You can say what you want, believe what you want, but... I think this quarterback battle might be a little bit closer than what most people think. And when I say closer, I'm talking about if Joe Milton has a bad quarter, bad couple of quarters, you might see Nico. I don't think Nico and Maleva will start game one, but I could definitely see him coming in around game four or five if things go south. That's the worst case in scenario for Joe Milton. Best case in scenario, Milton goes out there and balls out and Nico doesn't even play. I'm very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But I roll